Because nobody wants to come to Jurong, right? You need a passport to enter. Jurong stretches to the far western end of Singapore, but these residents showed us why a visit is worth it. They took us to see the hidden gems in their neighborhood. I know it's not hidden in its literal meaning, but not many people come here to relish in its beauty. So this park itself is a hidden gem. If you ask anyone if uh, they've been to Macritchie or Lower Salita Reservoir, most people would say, oh yeah, yes, I've been. Have you been to Jurong Park? No, because nobody wants to come to Jurong, right? You need a passport to enter. So no, I'm kidding, but yeah, but it's, it's the truth, like, at least in, in my own experience. So I think uh, Lakeside is a bit uh, underrated. This Lakeside, Chinese gardens, these are places that are close to my heart lah, since childhood. When I was growing up, the park was featureless. It would basically just tarmac for you to run on. But now it's filled with amenities, a cafe by the lake, and all these spots for you to just chill out. It's pretty much how it has changed and for the better, of course. These flats are possibly the oldest in uh, Taman Jurong now because all the other older flats have been demolished and then they built up newer flats and uh, relocated the residents. But these blocks around here, 116, 117, uh, the block that I'm living in, are possibly the oldest uh, remaining flats in Taman Jurong, even older than I am. Places are very familiar. My neighbors have practically seen me grow up since I was nine years old. It's especially in my block because it's a very uh, open door concept. We don't keep our doors shut, so every time we pass by, we greet each other, then we come out, have a chat. It's uh, a very tight knit uh, family because it's a very small estate, a lot of familiar faces. So it's like a small family around here. This block is otherwise known as the diamond block and that's because it's shaped like a diamond. So you get to see the shape if you are standing right in the courtyard of the building. Have they always been here, these kind of stalls? Yeah, for for a very long time, I think close to 10 years maybe. It's quite uh, special because you get all the good old stuff from the 90s that you don't find easily these days. Right behind me, where you see all this construction work going on, right? It's basically what used to be the old Jurong Stadium. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, this was the home ground for SAF FC when uh, S-League was very hot in Singapore back then. Every weekend, uh, we'd come by, buy our tickets. I think it used to cost one or two dollars per game. 
And I still remember sometimes when we were kids and if we came by slightly too late and they closed the ticket counters, we'd try and climb over the fences and uh, sneak into the stadium to catch a football game. We were like monkeys, we'd just climb over the fence, hop on in. Sometimes we were successful, other times we got caught. Yeah, but those were good times. Uh. People don't know about this place because Jurong Bird Park is actually like just below. So they were just, oh, Jurong Bird Park is below. But they didn't go all the way up just to see this place. This is one of the most deserted and I can say it's underrated park in Jurong itself. I first moved to Jurong three years ago and my then boyfriend, who is now my husband, brought me here to give me an idea on how Jurong is like. I was like mesmerized by the view and he told me that there are 27 trees planted by a lot of those leaders, by political leaders. So this tree was planted by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth on 19 February 1972. Actually what makes me proud, right, because all these 27 foreign dignitaries came to Singapore, particularly the west side of Singapore, because our airport is in the east, and they just came all the way here to plant a tree. Usually if, if you are like me, who just wants to run away from those crowdness, like just to take a look or reflect on life, like this is the best place to come. Jurong here adds to the charm of Jurong because of this iconic spiral building. And if someone were to come up here, they can actually expect a dual view of this place. The, uh, one side of the view, you can see the factory. And one side of the view, you can actually see uh, HDBs. It's unique because I don't feel that Singapore has a lot of this type of dual views. And I feel that the West Area only offers this kind of view in Singapore itself. Right now we are actually beside a very busy road but little do we know that below here is a part of Singapore's forgotten history. So this is the old Jurong railway line. People actually do come down here to like walk the railway line and to like find out how far does the old tracks even go and only to realise that actually towards the end there's actually mud and undergrowth that grows over them. Let me bring you down and then I'll, I'll let you have a look at the tunnel inside, okay? Alright, slowly does it, yeah? Baby set. Oh my god, this is so steep and muddy. Yep, <laughs> just have to step, yeah? Careful. Okay, you're good. So today we are here in what is an abandoned tunnel, which is part of the Jurong railway line, which used to run between Bukit Timah all the way to Jurong Port. I grew up in Jurong in the 90s, uh, and I remember when I was in kindergarten, I used to see these railway tracks that used to run parallel to AYE on the way to my kindergarten. Lah. So, I mean, it kind of got me curious of how like, you know, why are there railway tracks here when they are not, like, you know, linked to the MRT network? And then from there, it helped build my curiosity for public transportation in Singapore. As I grew up older, right, in secondary school, I started to understand more about this line and what it was used for, which is to transport goods and cargo from Jurong Port all the way to mainland Malaysia. Over the years where infrastructure in Singapore is improving, this railway line fell into disuse and it was pretty much abandoned by the early 1990s. This is actually a visual reminder of what Jurong was in the past when it was like an empty plot of land that is reserved for industrial development. And this line actually means a lot to me because it reminds me of who I was when I was growing up in Jurong. Wow. 
if this is darker and more cavernous than I thought it would be. This is actually a really special kiln because it is the last dragon kiln in Singapore that is functional. And there used to be over 10 dragon kilns in the Jurong area because there was really good quality clay in this area. And um, all these dragon kilns were used for mass production. So it was easy to go to the backyard, dig the clay and then use it to produce latex cups and other things. This kiln was built in 1940 by immigrants from southern China, but over the years it has been patched up several times uh, with clay and bricks. We are at the head of the dragon kiln and this is the firebox where we put in the wood during firing. Uh, firing the dragon kiln is actually a very labour intensive process just because for 40 hours straight we have to keep putting wood in to build the temperature and then to maintain it. Right now, we only fire twice a year just because it's so labour and time consuming. But each time, um, we could probably fire up to a few thousand pieces, maybe a couple thousand. I think this place is special because I like its rustic charm. I think it has a lot of kampong vibes that you don't find in anywhere else in Singapore nowadays. We rounded off our visit to Jurong with a trip to Raffles Marina at Tuas West. Now, I know it seems far, but the views you can get from the hidden pier behind the clubhouse made it all worthwhile. This is a good place to relax. Very good escape place. Yeah. It's very serene. I, I think if let's say you need some quiet place, you just can just come alone because it's very convenient. Just take the MRT. just to walk around, even if had nothing to do or so, hang around for a while before I leave. But they usually come here to uh, hang around, do some fishing and pass the time here very peaceful. And as the sun sets, you'll find it's a great spot for Instagram-worthy photos. Or just to unwind by the sea. <laughs>